let's begin to develop some surfaces for this scan. First we need to have a symmetrical um, half of this model. So to do that, I'm going to turn on symmetry, select the layer, layer, symmetry, create geometry. Now we have two scans. So we'd like those to be one scan. So under our mesh tools, mesh, partitioning, merge, I'm just going to merge those two objects so that we have one object and it'll be pickable. Next, I'm going to make a layer for my surface data. And let's begin by placing a square surface in this approximate area. Okay, so we already decided that a way that we were going to do this is using the um, curvature plot. And we'll just tune this scale a little bit so that we can see some edges here. Okay. So I like to do these surfaces or plan them or, or start them in two primary views. So since this is maybe a roof of something, I'm going to create, going to create it in this view and then kind of check that in this view. Okay. So we have two, two primary views we're going to use. So first, surface square 2 by 2. So we're creating a degree 2 by 2 surface. And I don't need to be that accurate here. We'll get accurate later. I'll just start 1, 2, 3, 4. And these can be just approximate because we're going to come back and um, adjust for centerline symmetry. So we'll, we'll get them all perfect by the time we're done. So I like to turn on a little transparency so now we can see um, through to our surface. And let's begin to make some plan view modifications. Okay. So right before we need to do that, it'd be nice or kind of optimal to have this thing just uh, make symmetry for me. So I'll go to Object, Edit, Symmetric Modeling, and just pick this surface. Okay, And we have some, a symmetric model. So now, as I make modifications, for instance, this surface right here should be arced. So if we go to our Move CV tools, I'm just going to use um, Slide for now, since the surface is planar. As I make modifications to this one, and I'll adjust my mouse sensitivity, as I make adjustments to this, you can see the other side updating. So I'm just going to make a couple of quick adjustments here. Um, and I like to try to do this, um, think of it as, as modeling the four boundaries as if they were four curves, and just bringing the centerpiece, the center point, along with it. Okay? So now we need to bring this back. Again, we're approximating this in the plan view a little bit. And then we had already decided in our previous um, laying these out that this was going to be an arc shape at the front. Okay, So we have arc shaped, straight, and arc shaped. Now we could come in here and get a little closer. So we might take this point and stretch him back here a little bit. Looks pretty good on that, that line there. Maybe this point will move over here just a touch. Okay. There we go. Now we need to start developing this in the front view. So now we need to check the crown and learn about the crown and how it is going to play into the surface. So to do that, let's turn on some cross sections. So picking the object in our square also, I'm going to go to cross sections. I'm going to create a new axis increment and I'm going to do it X, Y, and Z, and every hundred seems good. Okay. So now we can see the difference between our surface and our shape with cross sections. So we know right away that the whole center line needs to be raised. Okay. So the first thing we might do here is, is correct this piece or this piece. Now, how do I make that decision? Okay, so by that I mean we have we could raise the center of this up, or we could raise the middle of this up, and how I would decide which one to do. Well, I know that this whole center 
um, its current placement at this point is off, right? And by off, I mean we're on at this corner, we're on at this corner, and we're way off here. So the first thing I'm going to do is move straight up, because I already fixed my plan view. I'm going to move this straight up until it kind of, I don't want to say zeroes out, but until we can get this looking like we're, we're kind of on this scan. So a couple things here um, that will make this a little easier. I'm going to turn my palette off for a second. And I'd like to show you um, about the cross sections. So right here, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between these two cross sections. So I'm going to make the color of this one maybe burgundy. So now I can pretty easily see the difference between my surface cross section and my scan cross section. The other thing we don't really need right now is our diagnostic shading turned on. So I'm going to turn that off and just stow this right here for a second. Okay. Now we can get a, a kind of a cleaner look at what we're what we're working with. And again, I'm going to grab this hull. Okay, so we have one hull, and I'm stretching it up straight up. Okay, so we're not changing the plan view, and I'm just going to going to stretch that up until we meet at this corner. So now we have basically a curve if you think of this as patch precision lines, if I turn on patch precision lines, so I've got them called flow lines here, and I turn them on on my square, we can think of this, and I'm going to temporarily turn off my cross sections. we can think of this as one, two, three curves, and one, two, three curves. And if you're going to do direct modeling like this, that's important, because you have to work these all at the same time. You can't be grabbing or you shouldn't be just grabbing one CV and moving him around and trying to affect shape. You need to use hulls first and work in the plan view and then in another view, right? And in those views, keep things looking good. Okay, so let's go back here and turn our cross sections on because those are, those are um, really our guide right now. So now that we have this fitting at this corner, this point, and this point, now the center line needs to be raised. So I'm going to, again, hull and X, Y, and Z, so no change in the plan view, and I'm going to raise the front of this surface up, straight up, until it appears that we're close to surface, right? So we're still, this is, you know, you kind of got to use your viewing here. We need to be way up here, so I'm going to move this straight up. Okay, now I think we're pretty, we're pretty close right here, all right? We're under, and we're still under. This is where I, I like to not do all my movement with one control vertice. I would use this tool here now, proportional modification, and just a single CV. And I'm going to grab this guy and one back. So now I'm going to raise the back the most and bring this middle along for the ride. So it's kind of like, think of it as this curve is on. I need to raise this center curve a little and this rear curve a little more. So I'll just come back here. Again, I'm going to go straight up. And get this surface looking like it's, it's pretty much spot on. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now see that's brought the middle up right with it. If the middle came up a little bit too much, well, we might have to work on that. So right now, my next step, I guess, is I would start to look at where my crown is in the surface. So what do I mean by that? Where is the crown in the surface? So I can see kind of two things right now, maybe. One, I'm a little below here and a little above here. For those that might have a hard time seeing that, that's how you can use, or that's a time to use the um, stretching and we'll non-proportionally scale this up with the right mouse button. And we can see here now, with that non-proportional scaling, that I need to be flatter here and more crowned up here. So more arc here. So to do that, I'm going to use my movement tools. I'm gonna to use normal UV in this case, and I'll explain why. So normal U and V are different than slide. So I wanna use this um, normal UV because it's kind of moving along the shape of the surface instead of specifically a direction. Okay, this is this is moving, you know, 
along the arc sort of of the surface where if we were using a slide it's this vector so it'd be kind of going up and away whereas the the normal u and v kind of follows so if you look at the direction of this arrow right in comparison to this arrow see how they're different so i just want to kind of bias this towards the front a little bit okay and now we get kind of a little bit better balance in this surface okay and i'll turn off my non-proportional scaling now that i have that kind of set up i'm going to go to the top view and kind of talk about where i see crown in this surface and, uh, and try to explain what i mean by where i see crown here so i'll just use a quick pencil here And, and kind of show you that when I look at the gray section, I see flat. So I'm just going to say flat and flat and kind of a tighter arc right there. So maybe we, if we oversimplify or if we show that a different way, it comes up, it accelerates, and then goes down. It's not a clean arc. Now that's design versus how you might think of surface modeling, right? Perfect might be a nice arc mathematically, but design might call for more acceleration at the middle. So that's where I'm not the decider. As a surface person, I don't decide that. I could call someone's attention to it, but in this case, in this big, smooth area, I, I think I should be pretty close to this, this surface. And we'll probably try to work to a millimeter for, for this class. So I can't really change the amount of crown right now because this control vertice is, is kind of in its spot up and down in the screen right now and into the screen. Okay, so in 3D, that, that surface is pretty much where it needs to be. We could say, oh, geez, it needs to be up, you know. I could come in here and raise this point up just, right, just a little bit. And then we could move it back just a little bit, okay, to say we're perfectly on that spot. All right. But what that doesn't allow me to do is in the plan view, capture the fact that this is more crowned in the middle and flatter at the outsides. To do that, I need to add a row of control. So at this point, I've fit my plan view and I fit it in kind of the front view. And now I need to start adding some acceleration um, or, or some additional shape versus just these these easy shapes. So I'm going to increase to degree three in the V direction. Now that gives me some extra control for the crown in here. I'll go to move CV, and in this case I am going to use slide. Um, just what I'm thinking right now. I don't have a specific reason I can give you, but I don't I don't know that now I want to kind of move along the surface. I want to stretch the crown a little bit. So I'm going to move this in and see if we get better. And I'm going to move it out and see if we get better. So out doesn't appear to be uh, quite, as, quite as good of a move as in. So I'm going to move this, going to move this in. I don't want to go too far rearward, so now I'll start sliding this way. And we'll see if we can get some crown in the middle and a little bit of flatness on the outside, okay? So we might go, might go all the way to there. See how now we have kind of approximated this shape a little bit better? Okay. Now, I, kind, I, I don't like that very much, and here's what I don't like. In this view, all right, if I just turn this down a little bit, again, viewing is important and we do some stretching, see this zigzagging? Well, I would rather, if these need to be close, that then these control vertices should also be a little closer. So, and by close, I mean to one another. So if we do that, now we have this shape and this shape. Those are complementary to one another. And by complementary, I mean if this angle right here is in and out. This should be in and out. This should be in and out and in and out. Previous to that, right, we had out and in. 
you know? So from left to right down, now this goes the opposite way, okay? So just need to pay attention to the difference between those two, um, those two things, and we'll see if we can get this to redo and go back there, right? Now they look complementary to one another. So you could keep tuning this a little bit. Some other good things to, you know, we might need a little more um, crown or acceleration in the back. I don't want to work these too far. The next thing I would probably do with this surface is just kind of turn on some curvature combs. So we'll do that here. I'm going to up the samples and up the scale so we can just kind of, we can see what this crown looks like. I'm going to turn the min and max off because we don't really need that. So we've got kind of gentle curvature at the front, kind of constant. Then we've got some acceleration at the middle, then a lot of acceleration at the middle. I think that's pretty good. And I might take uh, the chance right now to just do a quick check with my black and white bars. I don't use these that often, but this is an area specifically that I use them for. So just seeing if the shapes of the surfaces are flowing with the shape of the scan. So I'm going to turn my transparency to maybe 50 or 60. Now I can see if the crisp edge of my surface is following and tracking the shape of the scan. So as we go across here you can see I kind of have the same arc Right? I don't have these little low spots and, and flu fluttering here, but I've got kind of the same amount of crown. Right, It goes negative back here and follows. It's got an S shape and then positive. Looks pretty good. Okay. Same technique for the front. All right. So from right here, we would start with a square 2x2 two two in the plan view. So I'm going to turn off my squish view, non-proportional scaling, go back to my plan view, surface square, two by two. Again, I'll go clockwise. So um, with alt and control, you can snap. I'll just try to get these approximate, okay, because we are going to um, come back just like we did and modify these pretty heavily. So we've got two by two. I'll turn on my control vertices so we can start to do some shaping in the plan view first. So I know right now, and I'm just going to delete my locators, I know right now that this was the shape of the tangent line I had predicted. So we need this to be that same shape. So step one, move controls, hulls, not single CVs yet, and X, Y, and Z. I'm just changing it in this view. And I'm going to slide this forward until it appears to me like we've got about the same crown, okay? Next, we need to see how far away we are. So we'll grab this in here and turn on, actually we don't need both, but we'll turn our cross sections on, okay? Now, since I've got the plan view that I want, our next would be the front view. So I'm going to move this and just move this straight up until it appears I'm on the scan. Okay, and I'm pretty close to that scan right there, right? Now, we need to bring this point up further. How do we do that? I'm going to use non... Um, let's get the menu to come up here. We'll use this um, non-proportional modification. We've got one CV picked as the primary, one extra one. Let's look down here now. And I'm going to bring this up. This one's coming along for the ride. Okay, so this one came along a little bit for the ride. It's not quite crowned enough now. Okay, if I right now came over here and started moving this CV without moving this CV, okay, I'd have kind of a problem. So this is again where you got to remember to use your holes instead of just single CVs. And I'm just going to move this up. Okay, now we've got matching pretty close right there and I'm just going to tweak this center one up just a little bit now now you know not all these sections are going to be perfectly um, related to one another that's kind of our our job is to get all these cross sections to relate to one another um, and by relate to one another this shape in the surface this shape in the surface and this shape in the surface need to be similar Otherwise, we should have a different surface placed in there or an extra surface, okay? Now that we've got some basic shape, I'm going to go to Object Edit and Extend with our Merge On. 
and I'm just going to extend this to the bottom of the windscreen. Okay. And now let's turn our black and white stripes on again and see how we're looking. So actually I think we're looking pretty pretty good. Um, maybe down in here we've got some issues that we'll look at, but if I look right here, see how this is kind of following pretty pretty nicely? That looks pretty, look, looks like we're going the right direction, okay? So now I would add a few, a few more little tweaks here. So again, watch my viewing is critical. When I look down this edge, I can kind of see the the ditch or the trough right here and I need to get this surface so that it's kind of following that. So maybe we'll go to our curvature again. And now I'm going to move some individual CVs. You could slide a hull. Maybe we'll try that first. So I'll slide with this larger arrow which kind of rotates the bottom out. Okay. Interesting. Anyone know what we've what I've what I've done wrong at this point? It's a good lesson for you. Right now, as I'm making changes here, what's happening to the other side? Absolutely nothing. Okay. So one thing that we need to do immediately, object edit, so we're not too late to do this, symmetric modeling, and just click on this guy. Now we really haven't done anything non-symmetrically about that because we moved the center point was the only single surface, only single CV that we we changed. So we've got our, our um, symmetry set up. Let's go back. Now we need to tweak a couple CVs along this edge because I think this edge kind of wants to go a little more straight. So this is too far out. So I'm going to pull him back and I'll take his two friends, this CV and this control vertice. Let's move them out just a touch. Okay, so he looks pretty good. And we'll deselect him. And maybe just bring this one out, just a little bit of crown to this one. When I say crown, I mean arc, you know. So I want this to kind of be an arc. And follow down that trough right there. Now we're just getting these surfaces close. You don't have to worry about, you know, being perfect. All right. Now, when I look at this now, I, I'm going to uh, just kind of check some overall shapes. It looks to me like we're a little bit low in the middle. So I'm going to come back and just raise this whole piece up, straight up. So I'm not really disturbing my plan view all that much, okay? Now that looks pretty good. We're quite a bit closer. Well, quite a bit. That could have been a quarter of a millimeter. Um, I might bring now just this single point here. I might bring him up. Okay, now you might be saying, well, you just, you, you mentioned you can't move one single CV. Well, these are guidelines, okay? Every one of these, every one of these surfaces needs a little bit of uh, hand handheld care right into getting its crown and shape we check the crown and shape using this to this tool so now we'll come back and we'll check with some curvature and we'll increase this bump this scale up and we'll check with some curvature you know to see how does this curvature compare to these right? and they all look similar if this had this type of shape right so acceleration at the ends and flat in the middle and this had this shape, that would be a problem. But we've got all similar and complementary shapes, okay? The same this way, all right? And I'm just going to do one quick check here, again, with our black and white stripes, and I think we're looking pretty good, okay? We've got a pretty nice match right there. From this point, I would start building this centerpiece um, to, to judge how good those quick primaries we made are. And we'll do that shortly.